Hi, I'm Barbara Musser and I want to welcome you to the You Are So Beautiful course. I am so glad you found your way here and I'm thrilled to be sharing this information with you. My name's Barbara Musser and I'm the founder of Sexy After Cancer. And this course has come out of my own 25 year journey with breast cancer and with working with lots of other women. And I see that there's a big, big need for this. So I just wanna tell you, I have some notes here because I wanna make sure that I tell you everything. I have lots of good stuff and I can't keep it all in my head. You know those effects of chemo brain. So I'm gonna rely on my notes here. So. Um, you get every tasty morsel from this course. I also have a couple friends here with me today who are receiving this information. So I wanna invite you here into my living room with me. Sit down, relax, we're gonna have a really good time today. So this course, this You Are So Beautiful course is an opportunity for you to transform your relationship with you in many different ways. So it's gonna work in areas including your experience of your own beauty and desirability, your capacity for happiness and joy, how much love you experience in your life, and what you wanna create in your intimate and sexual life. And you'll also have the tools to know that you can use what you get here to create what you want in other areas of your life as well. You'll know what it takes to design and create, and that is a powerful, powerful skill set to have. This course depends on your commitment to doing the deep work and to changing and to doing what it takes to change. I mean, if you already knew how to do that, you would have already done it, right? The format for this course is there are four videos. This is the first one. Each video is gonna be somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes long. I'll be giving you wisdom and teachings and tools to use, and there will be a meditation and a visualization in each one of these videos. There is a workbook that you probably have already downloaded from the You Are So Beautiful page on my website. If you haven't, I hope you will do that after you watch this video today because that workbook is packed with exercises. There are, are four sections, each section related to one of the videos that you're having, which will really help you to change, make the changes. And then once a month, for as long as you like, now that you have purchased this course, you will be able to call in and talk with me in person live. You'll be able to ask questions, get coaching, anything that you like, and that will be for one hour each month. And the dates and the call-in information for that course are in an email that you have already gotten, and they're also on the same page where you're downloading these videos and the workbook. It's really helpful if you think of this course as an empowerment from my highest self to your highest self. That's the level that we're gonna be working on. And we're gonna also be incorporating several different aspects of who you are as a whole being, a source being. So it's gonna be about your thoughts, it's gonna be about your feelings and your heart, it's gonna be about your spirit, it's gonna be about your energy. So we're gonna be working on lots and lots of different levels. And I invite you to trust as you participate in this course and interact with me in this material, that you're gonna know how to do this in exactly the way that's right for you, that's best for you. Because I'm gonna give it in the way that's best for me. I hope it's gonna be right for you. But you know how you receive information best. And when you can learn to trust your own wisdom and intuition, that is a very powerful tool. Lots of us stop trusting ourselves on the cancer journey. So this is gonna to help to restore that trust in yourself. So where the real power in this course is, in it, is in you actually doing the course. So part of it is watching these videos and getting the teachings, but the main part of it where you're really gonna get the best results is for you to actually do the exercises and the practices that are in the workbook. Because when you're receiving this information, through your ears, through your eyes, through your heart, and then you're actually changing your behavior and taking actions. That is a really powerful combination. And that's where change can really happen. What you'll experience in doing this course is you're gonna reveal your own personal map to yourself. And what I mean by that is the way that you're navigating through life via your beliefs and your thoughts and the way you think things are. And on this journey of breast cancer, there's a map that we're following. Until you know what the map is and until you reveal it to yourself, you don't know where you are. 
So you know when you're navigating, if you're going anywhere, you have to locate yourself on the map first and then see where your destination is to know how to get there. This is just like that. You're gonna see where you are on your own map and then you're gonna get the tools and the practices and the skills to be able to design a new map so that you can create your life the way you want it related to your sense of beauty, love, desirability, intimacy, and happiness. How cool is that, right? I think it's very cool. <laughs> so if you do this course and participate fully in it, you will make profound changes in your life. And this happens because we're working with three different states of consciousness, which is the power source for change and transformation. So what are those three states of consciousness? I'm going to talk about them really briefly. So the first one here is your conscious mind. So your conscious mind is where you think thoughts consciously and make decisions from. This is also the area that includes your five senses and your ability to reason and logic. So this is the place, for example, when this is your five physical senses and this is reason and logic. This is the part of your mind when you make a New Year's resolution to maybe start a new exercise program, you make a conscious intentional choice that comes from your conscious mind. Then the next part of our mind, which you can see is a little bigger, is called the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is where all of our beliefs reside, the things that we know about who we are as a woman, who we are as a woman with breast cancer, how life is, what cancer treatment means, all of that. These are beliefs that you picked up, many of them, before you had the capacity to distinguish between what was true and what wasn't true. So this is stuff you heard from your parents, you heard in school, maybe from watching television. And because we didn't have the filters to understand what was true and supported us and what didn't, we just took it all in like little sponges and that has become our operating system. It's like a computer operating system. It just keeps repeating itself and the function of it is to perpetuate itself. So here's what's interesting about this, is that the average person thinks about 60,000 thoughts every day. That's a lot of thoughts. But only about 5 to 10% of those thoughts are conscious thoughts. The rest, that 90 to 95% of them are here in this unconscious realm. And we don't even know that they're running us necessarily. It's like that commentary that's always going on inside your head. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's that little voice right now that's saying, what, what's she really talking about? It's that. We all have that. So what, what, what's in here is our beliefs about what it means to be a woman, what it means to have our breasts altered by cancer and cancer treatments, what it means to be, what desirable is, what sexy is, what love is, what happiness is, all of that is run through here. And most of us think that that's just the way life is and that we can't do anything to change that. And that's why so many women get really depressed or discouraged with cancer and treatment because it's this trauma and we think, oh, I'm always going to be identified with this for the rest of my life. This is just the way it is. Well, these are things like, I, um, I wrote an, a little example in here, how we're constantly comparing ourselves and seeing how we don't measure up. So there are little things that get in and we make decisions about who we are. So here's one. Why can't you color inside the lines like your sister, right? Well, we're just coloring when we're little kids. And when we hear that, we might hear that and make a decision of, oh, I don't color right. I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. That's a very small example, but we have literally thousands of those that run inside us and shape our lives. So we're gonna be working with these programs in this subconscious area to literally create some new programs. And I'm telling you, this is really, really powerful. Then there's this larger, larger area. This is SC for subconscious. And this area I'm going to call the super 
conscious. Some other ways to think about that. This might be God. This might be your higher self. This might be the universe. Depending on what your beliefs are, this is the place where we all have a connection to the larger cosmic wisdom in the world. And once you know how to tap into that, that is really, really powerful. So we're going to be working with all these three parts of your mind and changing your behavior at the same time. And when you participate in this course fully, and there's plenty that you're going to be doing here, you are going to know at the end of this course that you are absolutely beautiful, that you're desirable, that you're sexy, that, you're, that you can create happiness and joy in whatever ways you want to in your life. And that you're going to be able to know what your gift is to bring to the world, and you're going to be able to bring that gift to the world. Wow, how cool is that? All right, so that's the context for this course. Now we're going to start with laying the foundation, the inner foundation. Well, what do I mean by laying the inner foundation of knowing that you're beautiful and that you can have the love and intimacy that you want in your life? You may have heard the adage, I'm just going to put this in my pocket so it doesn't distract me. You may have heard the adage that personal growth and transformation and evolution is an inside job. Well, what that means is that our experiences of growth and happiness and evolution all begin with our internal experience and what we know deep inside. Many of us can benefit from having a strong foundation of self-love and self-acceptance, especially when we're on the cancer journey, and many of us don't have that. So we're going to lay the inner foundation. So here's what happens. Now, you know this, you've had this experience, or you know somebody who has. Receiving a cancer diagnosis is heart-wrenching and heartbreaking. Suddenly, you hear those words, you have breast cancer, and your world shifts, and it's never going to be the same again. So many things change in life with diagnosis and treatment. And then when treatment ends, or it's managed, and you're facing life with the question, now what? How do I go on? How do I put myself together? It can be daunting. In my experience, this is an opportunity to literally reinvent yourself and to realize that you can create the life that you want. And now, especially that you know how precious life is and how unpredictable it is, the question becomes, how can I live as well as I can for as long as I can? That's a great question whether you have cancer or not, but especially with cancer, how can I live as well as I can for as long as I can? Today, we're going to focus on the place that's in us that's beyond all the treatments and all the circumstances where we face the ultimate questions of how to love, how to live a life that has meaning for us and that matters. And the idea of making wise and skillful changes to move forward in your own life to what matters to you. We're going to use images and poetry and other means to find our path to knowing love and intimacy and beauty. We're going to go on a journey into the questions of meaning to what opens for us when the world breaks us open. What happens then? When life breaks us open, hopefully we're broken open to love and to learn to love more deeply. How do we access our soul and the language of love, of healing and growth and what really matters? This isn't the stuff that gets talked about in the doctor's office, but this is the stuff of what really matters to us. I love to use poetry because poetry creates the cre contains the deep truth of being human. And Mary Oliver is one of my favorite poets, and I want to share one of her poems with you that I really love. It's called The Summer Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, who has flung herself out on the grass. The one who's eating sugar out of my hand who's moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, 
who's gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? What is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I love this. And my invitation to you is to go beyond the anxiety and depression, the despair, to use the wound of cancer to break yourself open to love. It's time that you know that your life is wild and precious, that you, you are wild and precious, and it's time to live fully, even with the heartbreak and the grief of cancer, especially with the heartbreak of grief, enlivened by the heartbreak and the grief. The great spiritual traditions all teach about how to use suffering as a doorway into our birthright of knowing what it means to love and be loved. The purpose of suffering is to break us open to the deepest possibilities of love. In yoga, these teachings are called the sutras, and um, they are, uh, there is a sutra about the acceptance of suffering for spiritual growth to use that suffering to surrender to the divine force that's inside each of us. How do you use being broken open to journey further into what matters now? What wise and skillful changes will you make to move toward what matters? The deep healing in your life includes healing the traumas that came before cancer because there are. Cancer wasn't the first trauma in your life. It may have been the largest, but there have been other traumas. We're going to use cancer as the doorway into doing this very sacred work. So I invite you to step into this doorway with me. Beyond the medical and complementary therapies you may have experienced, let's look at the quality of your life. Let your intuition be your most profound guide here. And you'll use the, your intuition during our visualization that we're going to do in a few minutes. Most of the world focuses on the medical, the linear, the logical, the symptoms, and the side effects. And if you're experiencing side effects, they just may want to give you another medication to manage those side effects, which brings more side effects. What we're focused on here in this You Are So Beautiful course is the health of your spirit what your soul and your heart need to be in alignment and in integrity so that you know you are living a beautiful, wise, and skillful life. I get this image of a, a piece of shattered glass. It's broken in so many pieces that it can never be put back together to look like it did before it shattered. And yet, look closer. Each tiny piece of glass shimmers in the light reflecting the beauty of the sun or the moon or the beauty of your own heart. Many of us have lived our lives as if our heart could break at any moment. And we've learned how to protect our heart from the pain of breaking. And yet, in doing that, we have also sheltered ourselves from fully feeling anything, from letting the love in and out, where there's a way that we get numb with that. We become numb or, or brittle, not really feeling and yet yearning to feel fully. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Then comes cancer into our lives and the earthquake happens and everything shatters in an instant. Even if things appear the same on the outside, the tectonic plates of our soul have shifted and everything's different. What was once stable, now isn't. Can't count on our bodies in the same way anymore. 
knowing that we're invincible is a thing of the past. There are holes in the foundation. Well, this is good news from the perspective of opening our hearts. Lots of times when stuff like this happens, we keep going on, operating on top of the trauma we have experienced, and then somehow that keeps the trauma lodged deep inside us, and it keeps us from being able to fully integrate and to align internally. And this happens because of what we make trauma mean. Take a moment and think all the thoughts in your mind about having cancer. Those thoughts are often coupled with big feelings, and yet we may not have taken the opportunity to feel those feelings. This combination of thoughts and feelings imprints deeply on our subconscious mind, and it becomes the story we tell ourselves about who we are. We're not consciously aware of these stories. We may just think something like, well, this is the way life is now. And we become a person living with our life defined by cancer. I mean, think about it. First, they call us a victim of cancer. Then we're a survivor of cancer. And along the line, we fight the fight. Well, most of us internalize those stories and, and that language. And we become a person living our life defined by cancer. It happens fast. And it's easy to wonder why our life feels so very different. Rather than create something new on top of what lies deep in your psyche about cancer and you, we're going to explore and excavate some of these deeper places so that we can heal and integrate and then grow and create the life that we want. Rumi, who's another of my favorite poets, says, the wound is the place where the light enters you. Let those places where you're cracked be openings for the light, not only to come through and enter into you, but for your light to shine out. Here's a poem from Hafiz. Hafiz says, do you know how beautiful you are? I think not, my dear. For as you talk of God, I see great parades with wildly colorful bands streaming from your mind and heart carrying wonderful and secret messages to every corner of this world. I see saints bowing in the mountains hundreds of miles away to the wonder of sounds that break into light from your most common words. I'm not suggesting that cancer doesn't have a huge impact on your life, because it does. What I am suggesting is that we change the context of this so that our cancer journey becomes a place where the light enters and exits instead of a place of darkness. So the language of poetry speaks to the subconscious mind here and to the spirit and the images that it evokes are places that are the source of healing and growth for us. In your workbook, you'll see when you do the exercises related to this lesson, there are some questions for you to contemplate, to access in meditation or prayer or intuitively, however it feels best to you to access them and take as much time as you want and need. And Some of these questions are things like, what are your thoughts and beliefs about beauty and cancer, healing, love and intimacy? Where are the cracks in your heart and what do they reveal to you? What has you feel whole and loved? What makes your heart sing? And I know that you'll take the time and these questions will be powerful for you. So we're gonna close this lesson with a visualization. And to do this visualization, I invite you to sit or lie down comfortably. Don't get so comfortable that you fall asleep, however. <laughs> but be comfortable and then take some deep breaths down, all the way down into your belly, and gently allow your eyes to close. And see yourself in your mind's eye, or experience it, however you get this message, sitting under an ancient oak tree. You're supported by the earth and cushioned by the soft grass. There are colorful wildflowers all around you and it's a glorious day. Your eyes are drawn to the beautiful blue sky and you drink in the billowing white clouds as they float across the sky. Beneath the blue canvas of the sky, which stretches as far as the eye can see, you are supported and safe. 
The sun sparkles through the leaves on the oak tree, and you know that this place where you are, this is the field of possibilities. In this place, in the field of possibilities, you're showered with a sense of magical possibility, being fulfilled, joyful, perfect. Consider the deepest longing in you to feel healthy, whole, seen, accepted, and loved. Consider what you truly want for yourself in your life, in every aspect of your life. Let yourself know that there is a blossoming dream in your heart about your life. And know that attention, the attention that you put on the dream energizes the dream and intention transforms it. If you can dream it with intention, you can experience it. Every action, Every thought and every feeling is motivated by an intention. That intention is a cause that acts as one with an effect. It's your intention that creates your reality. Make choices with intention and trust. Plant the seed of intention and surrender fear and anxiety and settle into abundance and grace. Let the fear Anxiety and doubt float away across the sky on those billowy white clouds. Just let them go. Awe, wonder, potential, and knowledge are all here for you. Realize what your intention is for beauty, for love, for intimacy, for joy in your life, and plant those seeds of those intentions in your heart. We open the door to fulfillment and abundance with our intention and with knowing that our true power is great and that we are magnificent creators. Nothing is held back in this abundant universe. Our deepest desires reframe our view as we open to the process of realizing our dreams. And then when we place attention on our intention for what we want, that accelerates the realization and the manifestation process. The key is to be fully aware and present. Every thought, every feeling, every belief, every action creates reality. So choose with intention, then dream, and then put your attention on that dream and see yourself enjoying the experience of your intended reality. See yourself in this field of possibilities as healthy, healed, whole, perfect, beautiful, inside and out. See yourself experiencing the fullness of love and intimacy in all forms. As you see yourself, feel what that feels like Feel the joy, the happiness, the relaxation, the inspiration, the gratitude, and the excitement of all of this. And know and trust that this is already happening as a result of your intention, your attention, and your dreams. So breathe that in. Feel it. Feel those seeds taking root in your heart already. And then when you're ready, gently use your breath to come back into the present moment, into this place where you're sitting or lying. Take a deep breath down into your belly and slowly open your eyes and place a hand on your heart so that you can feel and remember the sensation of the dreams that are already blossoming there. And then take a moment and write in your journal what messages you received in this visualization. And if you like, feel free to use this visualization daily and see what comes to you. See how it evolves and grows. It may come during the visualization. It may come later as you're going into your day 
or at night in a dream. If you ask for the information and open to receive it, it will come. So now open your eyes if they're still closed. Take a deep breath. And I'll close with one more Mary Oliver poem called Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Welcome again to the You Are So Beautiful course. I'm so glad you're here. And until next time, much love and many blessings to you.